Now I've spoken about the boys on this channel quite a bit, but I've never actually dedicated an entire video to the show. I'm going to continue the tradition by talking about Tiger and Bunny, an anime with a lot of similarities and quite a lot of noticeable differences from the boys. Now the boys is very bloody, very sweary, and very sexually charged, whereas Tiger and Bunny has the occasional bit of blood, I've had nosebleeds that were bloodier, the occasional swear word, but nothing anywhere near as bad as what Butcher loves to say, and there's no sex scenes in Tiger and Bunny, although I will say that I really like Blue Rose's outfit. However, they both provide a really cynical depiction of what the life of a superhero would be really like. However, I feel like you could get away with showing Tiger and Bunny to your kids, whereas you absolutely cannot show the boys to any children. What I love about these two shows is that they show two different negative sides of superheroes being real. The boys shows the corruption of one's powers and the unfortunate consequences that can have on people without abilities. The boys is kind of a reflection of celebrity and social media culture, showing the negative sides of that, but in a heroic coat of paint. If pop stars and actors are constantly coked up doing morally questionable things and just making a nuisance, then of course these problems would increase tenfold if they all had superpowers and no one could do a thing to stop them. Tiger and Bunny takes the stance of the heroes being more like office workers than pop stars. They get bored and tired of their job, they are contractually obligated to always do what their higher ups want, and they are not allowed to say or do anything that could compromise the brand, and none of them have the power of Homelander to go against this. I also love that all of the heroes are adorned in brands like their footballers, and I love that everything they do is broadcast on television for all to see. Kind of like those cop shows where you watch them bust into houses and arrest people, except this one is more family friendly and has a brighter filter over it. These elements make the superheroes heroics feel secondary to the business. This is what makes Tiger such an interesting character. Kotetsu is a true hero through and through. He's by no means the best, in fact he's arguably the worst at the job, but he values saving people over the role of being a celebrity. That's why he refuses to reveal his identity to the public, even when the cat is out of the bag. He's older than the other heroes and therefore feels out of place, yet all the heroes look up to him because Tiger is a genuinely kind man. Blue Rose even develops feelings for him, although I doubt these feelings will ever be reciprocated, as Tiger is both super dense and because this anime seems to treat Tiger's character specifically very realistically. Before I continue, prepare yourself for spoilers. I will be talking about Tiger and Bunny Seasons 1, the movie, and Season 2. I probably won't go into too much detail, but I thought now was the moment to put the obligatory warning. I love how the show treats Kotetsu's waning power, and how he refuses to give in to his shortcomings. He's by far the weakest of the heroes, and clearly tries the hardest out of all of them to justify his place in the team. I'm not sure whether we'll ever get a Tiger and Bunny season 3 or another movie, but I love where Kotetsu's story ends in Tiger and Bunny 2, as it feels like a natural and realistic end to his character's journey. I like that the anime didn't all of a sudden just give Tiger his powers back, as there was a moment where I think they could have. Instead, they did the opposite, and it made the anime a lot better. I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've seen the first season of Tiger and Bunny, and I don't remember it that well mainly because I wasn't super fond of it. It didn't really hold my interest, although the last few episodes were great. I really loved the Twist and Barnaby story, but aside from that, I didn't really care about the show. I wasn't too excited for season 2, but I thought I'd catch up on the film to prepare myself, and I actually really enjoyed it. I forgot how good the dynamic between Tiger and Bunny is. The two of them constantly argue, but it feels like two brothers that care for each other, instead of two people that actually hate one another. Tiger is the older brother who gives the more naive, cocky Bunny advice, and not just heroics, but life in general. Whereas Bunny is the younger brother who believes the older brother is an idiot, and that he actually knows best. What's fantastic is sometimes, he does. Tiger isn't particularly smart, but that doesn't mean his words have no value. It's great watching as the words that Tiger utter occasionally break through Bunny's hard exterior and hit him where it matters. Fortunately, the other characters are just as great as Tiger and Bunny. I'm particularly fond of Blue Rose. I love her design, but also her relationship with Tiger. Considering she's the queen of ice and fawns, it's nice to see her open up to Tiger and be a lot softer around him. Although I hope the two don't end up together as it's quite an age gap and I just can't see Tiger viewing her as anything other than his niece. Golden Ryan is also a great character, so I was more than happy that he got paired with Blue Rose this season. He's a fun character, and I'm glad they didn't go the villain route with his character, as I expected them to over the course of Tiger and Bunny Rising. I like that his character develops over the course of the second season, and I also think that he has a fantastic power. The other characters are great as well, but Tiger, Bunny, Blue Rose and Ryan are the standouts for me. 
although I do like the new heroes they added in Season 2. Well, maybe not Water Girl, but Thomas and Black were two cool characters, and just like Tiger and Bunny, they had an amazing dynamic. I like that in some ways Black is to Thomas what Tiger was to Rose. Another thing I would like to praise is the English dub for this anime, which is what I watched. All the voices are distinct and in my opinion really suit their characters. Specifically Wally Winger as Tiger, Yuri Lowenthal as Bunny and Liam O'Brien as Lunatic. Lunatic is a really tragic character that I forgot to mention earlier and one that really grew on me to the point that I was actually disappointed in his character's end in Season 2. Hopefully Season 3 can rectify it and bring him back, but anyway, the dub is good. Although there is a Kobayashi Dragon Maid dub moment where a script localizer wrote something that clearly wasn't in the original Japanese script, This scene stands out really badly in the anime, mainly because whether you agree with what Ryan says or not, no one talks like this. No one would ever say these words in a casual conversation, least of all Ryan, the same character who had no issue calling Blue Rose Princess and was the character who pointed out that Agnes had gained weight. It's another case of a localizer overstepping their bounds, resulting in a terrible scene that sticks out for all the wrong reasons. But other than this rather notable scene, the dub is great and I have no issue with it. I can't believe I forgot about this aspect of the anime, but Tiger and Bunny makes the interesting decision to combine 2D animation and CGI. Now this practice is a lot more common nowadays with major anime like Chainsaw Man and Bleach Thousand Year Blood War doing the same thing, but no anime does it quite as much as Tiger and Bunny. Sometimes I think this trick works and other times I don't, but overall I'm used to it. I love how fluid the characters motions are when it's CGI and I don't think the CGI in this anime is bad. Would I rather the whole anime be 2D? Yes, but that doesn't mean I hate the CG. In fact, I think it gives Tiger and Bunny a unique charm and really makes it stand out from the pack, even though there are moments that are let down by the CGI. Basically, what I'm saying is that the CGI is not on a par with Studio Orange's works, but I would put it above the CGI in Attack on Titan's final season. By the way, I don't think the CGI in Attack on Titan is bad, I just think Tiger and Bunny is better able to utilise its CGI. If you haven't checked out Tiger and Bunny, then I recommend you do. I think it will pleasantly surprise you, and it is definitely perfect for those who think the boys is a bit much.